Hello, and welcome to Discussions with Energy Leaders. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Dave Robau. Dave is the founder and CEO at National Energy USA. He's also the executive director and founder of Gulf Coast Energy Network. I've had the opportunity to meet and work with Dave and, and visit with him on multiple occasions. And he's one of sustainability's most sought after leaders. He advocates for resource conservation and sustainable design solutions. And in 2011, he was honored at a White House ceremony as one of President Obama's champions of change for his work and dedication to sustainability. As mentioned, he's the founder and CEO of National Energy, which is an energy engineering firm that provides integrated solutions to help clients manage resources and increase their triple bottom line. And he's also the founder and executive director of the Gulf Coast Energy Network, where he leads a network of scientists, engineers, architects, and planners from the various Gulf Coast states to expand the renewable energy market and promote energy conservation. Welcome, Dave. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. That is uh, quite an introduction. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You've been involved with energy ever since I have met you and going back well beyond and, and hearing a lot of the things that you have done. How did you initially get interested and involved in the field of energy and sustainability? Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, let's see. So I, I've been an environmental scientist for about maybe 23 years at this point. And I've always had an interest in, you know, reducing pollution, you know, through different various technologies and practices and, and things like that. And I've been very, very fortunate that I've just followed this tremendous career path that I've just had lots of opportunities and great, great mentors. I got into energy uh, during the, um, the George W. Bush administration. I was, uh, I was an environmental scientist working for the Air Force. And uh, at the time, you know, this was right before the passage. Um, we had lots of legislation that was coming down the pipe. But the Department of Defense was a little, little kind of slow. You know, public policy was getting out ahead of uh, what the DOD's central mission was. And uh, I was literally one of the first people to get accredited under the Leadership for, for Energy and Environmental design programs because the DOD was just kind of like, yeah, I don't really see this as a priority right now. And boy, how have things changed? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it was, you know, it was all about the mission and, and, you know, people, people like me within the department of defense, we were kind of like the canary in the coal mine. We were like, look, this has impacts to national security. You know, when, when your installation is flooded, because of, you know, uh, 500 year storm events and it impacts the mission, it, it, the politics doesn't matter anymore at this point. You know, we, we have a responsibility as a, as a service to be able to defend the homeland. And if your installation is underwater, you know, obviously you can't do that. So we were fortunate that, you know, as, as administrations come and go, the leadership within the, at least in the Department of the Air Force, was was very much interested in in you know looking at this and researching it, and I, I just had a tremendous opportunity doing R and D uh, for the Air Force with kind of an unlimited budget, which not, normally doesn't happen in the real world. No. You know, it was like go fix these problems. Uh, so I, I've just been really really fortunate. I've been focused on energy for probably the last maybe fifteen years or so um, because it just it hits so many things because in military. You know, energy security and national security, those are intrinsically linked. Um, so it, it's just, it's been a passion of mine. And I don't even feel like it's work, you know, because I love doing it. My, my wife says I, I don't have any days off because I, I just work. If I'm not in the office, I'm reading something, I'm learning. And yeah, it's just it's something I love doing. My recollection from one of the first times we ever met or when I heard you at the Power of Conference one time was you were talking about one of your projects was getting rid of waste. Yeah. And I believe you were using lasers, was it, to do um, that? Pl plasma. Plasma, so, that's what it was. Yeah. If you get me started talking about <laughs> trash, I mean, I could try. I could talk <laughs> trash for hours. Um, but, but, yeah, so, so you got to remember, this is up in the, the lead up to our conflicts uh, in Iraq. So this was during Operation Enduring Freedom and what the Department of Defense was doing to manage its garbage in what we call the AOR, Area of Responsibility, 
is uh, we would dig a hole in the ground. We would put all of our garbage in it. And let, let me clarify, when I say all of our garbage, I mean everything. It didn't matter. Wood pallets, MRE containers, styrofoam, lead acid batteries, everything went into this hole and we'd pour jet fuel over it and we'd light it on fire. We call them burn pits, if you're familiar with, with that term. Um, and obviously, as you can imagine, you know, terrible impacts to human health. So we had uh, hundreds of airmen that were exposed to these noxious fumes from quite literally just open air burn pits. And the Joint Chiefs of Staff came to Hurlburt at the time I was working at Air Force Special Operations Command here in Florida, came to our installation and said, hey, we have to cease and desist these burn pit operations because they're, they're killing people. You know, people are contracting cancer. So our job <laughs> was no small task. We had to design, build and deploy something that had never been built before to be able to sufficiently manage the waste stream. So we landed on plasma gasification. So uh, if you remember back to eighth grade chemistry, you know, you have the various states of matter. Uh, what happens if you superheat uh, ionic gases, you create what's called a plasmonic field. And in there, inside of this crucible, we have a, a plasma field that we've created with an adductor and, 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 and we're creating these, we're mimicking temperatures hotter, hotter than the surface of the sun. So anything that you put into this crucible uh, at the molecular level, we're breaking down these long chain carbon molecules and reformulating them into carbon monoxide and hydrogen, which is a great energy vector. So effectively, we're taking all that chemical energy that's in the waste stream and then converting it through a process to mechanical energy and then turning a turbine to produce electricity. So that was a 40 minute presentation that I think crunched into just a minute. But, <laughs> but effectively, um, you know, the technology, while it was super expensive and may not have had a commercial operation, application rather, uh, it worked really well for the mission at hand. And that's, that's when I fell in love with garbage bill. <laughs> that, <laughs> That's when I realized that, wow, something that is so destructive to the environment, uh, you know, which is solid waste landfills, can also be the key to solving this other issue with fossil fuels and our dependence on dead dinosaurs. Like, you know, what if we can, what if we can somehow, you know, correlate the, the energy content that's in our garbage and, and produce electrons? So the, the short answer is, yes, you can. Uh, it gets a little more complicated than that. And then you got to think about you know, payback and return on investment is sometimes people with plasma gasification, people get a little twitchy when you talk about a, a 77 year ROI, right? That's, uh, that's probably not going to pencil believe, out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's been, it's been quite a journey. I, I, I've seen a lot of things, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Well, my yeah. impression is that through your network, you still interface to some degree with Department of Defense on energy and sustainability topics. Is that very correct? closely? Yes. What work is, are you doing with them? Yeah. So through the nonprofit, you know, a lot of what we do, as you know, is we host technical conferences and workshops. And sometimes the DOD will come to us and say, hey, listen, this is an issue that we're really trying to wrap our heads around. You know, can you put together a session on energy microgrids? Or, you know, we're transitioning to electric vehicles, but we're not sure how to do that because the DOD doesn't want to manage that. You know, we may want to outsource that to the utilities or to the private sector. So we'll put together a workshop that's very specific. So as you know, because you've attended the Power Up Energy Expo that we do every October. October, by the way, is Energy Awareness Month. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, Energy Action Month. They just recently changed it. So the Department of Defense celebrates Energy Action Month in October. Um, and I distinctly remember having conversations uh, right as... Hurricane Michael was out in the Gulf. Um, we got a call from Air Force uh, Civil Engineer Center out in uh, Tyndall Air Force Base and said, hey, look, this storm is barreling down. It's probably going to make direct hit in Panama City. We know that the Power Up Energy Expo next year is scheduled to be in Pensacola. Could you consider moving it to Panama City Beach? Because if this happens, we're going to need all hands on deck and we're going to need to be talking with our industry partners, you know, NGOs, the Federal Lab Consortium. So we did. We, we, moved, we moved the event, and um, we've been working seamlessly, not just with the Department of the Air Force, 
they're really with you know DOD, um, Defense Logistics Agency, Army Corps of Engineers, through this whole reconstruction project that's taken place at Tyndall Air Force Base, which right I think right now is over five billion dollars worth of reconstruction. I think I I think the little factoid that stuck in my head was eighty six percent of all structures at Tyndall were either uh, were unusable, so they either were just completely had to be replaced or you know significant. Uh, uh, modifications to the building. So that storm is very, very devastating. And the conversations that we had that 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 power up following uh, Hurricane Michael were all around resiliency. You know, we were talking, you know, solar panels and electric vehicles and all this other stuff that the conversation shifted to fortified construction and, you know, how, how do we make these installations more resilient and all these kinds of things. So yeah, we've had a, a very, very close relationship. We're now, believe it or not, in our 14th year of the Power Up Energy Expo, which is kind I of hard to believe. It's been long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and it's funny because I had we've been doing it for so long, it I, I didn't really register for me. But like the first Power Up, we, we could have probably held it on a city bus because there's just a handful of people, <laughs> right? But uh, it's kind of ebbed and flowed as conferences you know, normally do. And I think in its, in its heyday, we were at like maybe 660 people. Yeah. which uh, is difficult to manage. <laughs> but uh, but no, we've even through COVID, you know, we went virtual, we pivoted, which is what we all did, you know, during COVID. And we, we still managed to pull together because it, it was so mission critical for the Air Force specifically. So we, we felt like we had to push through and, and put together, you know, some kind of an event. So even through COVID, we managed to, uh, it, so it's, I think it's the longest continuous sustainable energy conference in florida i don't know if that's true but the marketing people told me to say that and it works it, it works well <laughs> well i know power up it comes through the gulf coast energy network and you're right. so involved with the community and you and i have talked about a lot of the things that you're doing with gulf coast energy network is this something that was an original idea of yours is it something from a group of friends how did that come about yeah you know it just uh What's Ben Franklin's quote? Um, uh, invention is the is the, what is it? Um, mother of necessity is the necessity mother of invention. is the yeah. mother of invention. Thank you. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what it was. Like nobody was really doing it. You know, we were, our USGBC chapter might have been the closest to like doing it, but they didn't speak military at all. So we we stood it up. Um, I guess at this point it would have been 16 years ago, just to kind of see you know what's the audience going to look like. And we pulled people from a lot of the organizations that you're a part of. ASHRAE was there from the really beginning. Uh, American Planners Association, architects came on board. So all of a sudden, we kind of looked around and we we're like, hey, we're going to need a bigger bus. You know, there's a lot of people coming to this thing. <laughs> so it, it was it, that's just my personality. You know, I look around. I'm like, OK, if nobody's doing it. OK, fine. I'll do it. And uh, and I just surrounded myself with good people that were very, very passionate and they're still involved. John Veronica Cross still involved, you know, to this day. So we're 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 pretty fortunate that we've. I've always been a real a uh, good team builder. You know, I look around at a lot of the deficiencies that I have as a as a person, and I pull in people that have different skill sets. And yeah, we're still kicking. Well, I know uh, one of the first um, power up conferences, um, power up energy expos I attended was um, I think it was at Hurlburt, and it was right after a hurricane. Um, and then it was a fairly small group, so the bus wasn't that big. And then I think I attended that when I had about 600 people on the bus. And I got to compliment you because the your graciousness and uh, you know as as friendly as you are, you still still felt like it was a small bus. So kudos to you. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that, Bill. With the um, this year, I know the Power Up Energy Expo, and you were working with Sami and the Tri-Regional Joint Engineering Training Symposium. You're doing it together. Right. This is the first year you've done that, isn't it? It has. So this, uh, you know, the Society of American Military Engineers, or SAME as we call it, um, I, I've been a, a board member here in the Pensacola Post for some time now, and Emerald Coast Post, and we have a number of posts throughout the state of Florida. They've always had kind of a supporting organization role. But this year we've actually co-hosted. So this um, this regional jets conference it moves around from I think maybe South Carolina, uh, um, 
Atlanta, uh, Georgia, and it kind of moves around the southeast. So Florida, it was our turn to host it. So last year, when we knew it was going to be coming through the um, through the state, the uh, the regional chairman for the Society of American Military Engineers reached out and said, "Hey, would you be?" open to collaborating. And if nothing else, I'm the world's biggest collaborator, right? So <laughs> if you um, if you want to go fast, go alone. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to go far, go together, right? I think yeah. that's the quote. So um, we, we teamed up and it's just been a, a great, so we're reaching a different audience. Their, their event, I'll be honest, is more focused, I guess I should say a little more focused on business development, you know, kind of connecting the service provider with the with the Department of Defense and kind of putting those two together. Ours has historically been more educational. Of course, there's networking involved. There always is. But um, putting these two together, just it just made a lot of sense. Dave, thank you for joining us today. And for listeners and those who are viewing, hope you will join us again for the second part of this series with and Dave. He's just fascinating. As you can tell from watching my reaction, I enjoy talking to him. <laughs>